Hello, I'm Matthew Maloney, and today I'll be talking to you about the issue of living costs in Australia. Australia is an amazing country, full of funny, admirable people, perfect scenic views, and many culturally diverse food options. All of this comes at a cost, however. 88% of Australians say that they feel the pressure coming from the prices of everyday life, such as electric bills and grocery shopping. This issue is continuously on the rise as well, with power slash gas bills, petrol prices, grocery costs, water bills, health costs, rent and mortgage costs, and educational expenses all being things that Australians have reported to be at a higher cost than some years earlier. Australian people have put the blame mostly to the Australian Federal Government for the increases in bills and services, while the cost of groceries have gone to the major food corporations. On the topic of groceries, 59% of Australians have said that they have had to cut back on how much they eat to be able to afford groceries when they go shopping. Just over half the population. That means that about one in every two people have stopped eating full proper meals. This is just food related. Housing costs are in an exorbitant position. For rent alone, in comparison to the US, the average price is 65% more here in Australia for an apartment in a city centre. That's just rent. To buy a house, the median house price in a major city like Sydney is 1.1 million Australian dollars. While in America, the median house price in New York City is around 800,000 Australian dollars. Housing alone for people of the new generation in Australia is a daunting thought when you have to provide the finances for yourself. With mortgage rates being at a point where a $600,000 house at a 4.2% mortgage rate over 25 years will cost you a total of 992000 Australian dollars. This making it a $3,300 a month investment. People working a full-time 38-hour week on $20 an hour will only have $275 a month left for the rest of living expenses. Due to this, cutbacks are needed to, to be made to be able to afford common necessities. The most common area for cutbacks is holidays, with 45% of people stating that they have had to remove or reduce the amount spent on holidays. To some, this might not seem like a big deal, since holidays are not something that happens every couple of months for the average Australian. What if I told you 11% of people have had to cut back on education, for either themselves or their children, to be, able to, have, to be able to afford to keep a roof over their heads and food on the table? That is a big deal. This issue of having to cut back on things that either keep us happy, further our education, or assist in ease of living is becoming more prevalent with the cost of living increasing. With people stating that it is near impossible to move out and having to stay with their parents at ages nearing, the, nearing 30 because of financial instability, making it easier to stay in a house that is already paid for and pay board instead of moving out as many of the older generations would have. All I have spoken about so far is housing and food and it is quite obvious that there is an issue as these are two things alone are making it hard to live on a full-time job at minimum wage. Australia generally has plans in place for things like healthcare, with public healthcare being free to all citizens, also education in public schools being free, and HECS being available for people seeking a higher education. However, for bills such as power, water, and even petrol, if you cannot afford them, you go without. You will get these services cut. This trend has led to a depressing economic outlook in the Australian people, with three out of four people saying that the economy is going to continue getting worse. Australia is still a developing country with overseas trade and business establishing itself and becoming more present. More jobs and economic wealth for the country will come in. With jobs comes more money, more money means more spending, more spending means a better overall economy. A nation's economy is like thin ice, and balancing this is an important job as the negative effects of a bad economy can be detrimental to a country. On the flip side, however, a country with a grasp on economics can really push a country to be its best without hurting the people or businesses. 
Australia also has the benefit of being a first world country. People can manage to live on a minimum wage, especially with another person, splitting the bills in two and creating more room for some small luxuries. We are still growing as a country and all of these grim statistics will eventually fall to a more reasonable level and life will return to the same expenses the boomers had before the economy changed. Overall, the pinch of financial stress will loosen and luxuries will be within arm's length for most people. Thank you for listening to my insights and statistics on what the state the Australian economy is in and what potential there is for it to improve. Hope you have enjoyed this presentation and if you as a young Australian are worried after hearing all I've just spoken about, have no fear. Australia will always be a great country to live in and the economy is looking like it will improve over the course of the next couple of years. Thank you once again. Goodbye. Thank you.